cool skins, of course. Cool skins, no, no doubt, no doubt. They always making cool skins. Our skin department is second to none. Bunch of random stuff. We don't really care about that. Some quality of life stuff. Wait, what? Oh, that's just for new gods or like who's gonna be free. They fix some bugs. Don't feel like reading it. Yada yada. Sometimes bug fixes are just straight up buffs. So, um, but we're not gonna read that right now. They increase the brawling uh, time. So the time it takes to get out of combat so you're healing more is actually increased now. So you're going to be in combat more for three to five seconds. This doesn't apply to like blink or anything. I don't think so. But yeah, um, so actually kind of interesting. Sort of a buff to healers. Not going to lie. The way I see it as well is like, I don't know. I think they should do something with this, the interactions with this, because there's a lot of characters in the game that are being hurt by the out of combat anti-heal. Characters that rely on their self-healing that aren't necessarily a problem when it comes to healing. Like, the, the reason healing has always been broken is, like, group healing. Like, you know, Hell, uh, Afro, Changa, Sylvanas, Yemoja, characters like this. And then going items that help with that. Um, but characters that rely on their self-healing kind of are, have gotten hurt by it. Some characters like Wukong, he just heals for nothing in his ult. Even, like, Vamana just ulting to, like, heal up in lane is, is bad. Uh, Amaterasu... Specifically in Solian, it hurts people. And also characters that build lifesteal that want to rely on their lifesteal, like ADCs, when they go heal off of a back camp or something. So, yeah, unfortunate for that. But um, they changed some XPs here, and I don't really care about that too much. Some new glyphs. They kept the uh, healing Jotun's glyph. Gone ahead and uh, changed the ferocity, because before it was an auto-attack item that was on an ability-based item. So they changed it to Executioner. So now Jotun's Ferocity is being replaced by Jotun's Cunning. Jotun's Cunning. <clears throat> cunning. And uh, basically it's just another like cooldown reduction item that you can use. It's kind of sort of like a Spear of Desso, but um, your next on ultimate ability that damages every odd gets 25% of its cooldown, instantly refunded. This is kind of cool. Um, makes a lot more sense for the Jotun's tree. So that's going to be, uh, I think, a lot better. Yo, Crafts Next, thanks for the tier, or the tier two for 18 months, dude. That is very, very appreciated. Can we get some hype in the chat for that? And God with the four months. Welcome back to the Ponza Family God. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Especially you, crap. The tier two. That's insane support, man. Calamitous is still going to be the same. Perfected Rotatuity is new. They changed the uh, auto attack Rotatuity. Kind of the same thing with Jotun's, where it's like, it was kind of like an ability based item that you're, you know, Overrun was basically the only one who wanted to build uh, Rotatuity with when it was the auto attack item. So they changed that. Now this is going to be more of an ability based item. Blah, blah, blah. Basically, you just get more cooldown and you get movement speed when you when you hit somebody with your, uh, when you damage them. Um, kind of similar to the Jotun's item, but... So now, the Nimble Rata Tahiti is going to be on Bancroft's Talon. Kind of makes more sense because usually auto-attack characters maybe want to build uh, Lifesteal. So, maybe this is like their one power item that they can go. Um, but Bancroft's Claw is actually where it's at. Bancroft's Claw is actually pretty sick. This is going to be like a Jean-Qui, a Hades, um, just like a character that gets in there that's a magical type item. Maybe like a Kabrakin. You need to build a lot of power for it to actually work, but basically what it does is it gives you a shield, and it does a percentage of the enemy's max health. Um, like when you, when you, basically when you when you blink ult. So say you're Jean-Qui, you blink ult, you're going to get a shield yourself, and you're going to be doing their, uh, a percentage of their max health. So it's kind of like a Soul Reaver, but you also get a shield. And it's just like just an item to get in there and brawl on. I think it's going to be pretty sick, um, especially on those characters that I mentioned. So Drotin's Ferocity is now going to be on Executioner, which makes a lot of sense. I think this is actually going to be a staple in Hunter builds now, maybe even Auto Attack Jungler builds. This is an insane item to have on Executioner. I was uh, I was preaching that Executioner needed a uh, needed a glyph for a while now because Silver Branch is like this item that you're supposed to. It's supposed to be a niche item, but it was like the one stop shop for all of your percent pen, which is just weird for hunters because a lot of them didn't even over cap. But the item is just so stat efficient, and you need that twenty percent pen. Now they actually have options because Jotun's or not a Jotun's, but because Executioner actually has glyphs on it now. Uh, and this glyph is really, really sick. I think this is probably going to be in every single ADC build. And this might be this might be too broken, honestly. Whereas this one is more of a jungler uh, auto attack item because what it does is it caps your attack speed at 1.75. It increases the efficiency of Executioner itself because you get more percent pen. And it only takes two stacks, um, which is pretty strong. Just auto something twice and then all of a sudden it's basically almost 40% less uh, protections. 35, 36, whatever. Round up to 40. Because ADCs are broken. <laughs> but it does cap at 1.75, which is pretty bad for ADCs. They want to have high attack speed, and that just is a, a big uh, 
This is just not good for them. So I think this is more of like an auto attack jungler item, especially characters that have good auto cancels. So a character like Nemesis, a character like Osiris, characters that like they can use their abilities in between their autos just to get a really good efficiency out of this, and it'll make them hit really hard. Characters that are already kind of building Executioner as like the uh, they're playing like that role where they can like one shot objectives with their stone cutting and Executioner, Nemesis, Osiris, Erling, characters like that. It's gonna be even better now. And keep in mind that this does work on objectives, so this item's gonna be pretty good for them. Um, Magi's are getting glyphs now. Magi's is getting glyphs now, which is really cool. Two of them. Um, one of your passes were consumed. This is going to be Magi's Shelter. Nearest ally god within 25 units gains uh, protection from a single heart con crowd control effect for five seconds. So basically, you just give your Magi's to somebody else on your team. The problem with items like this is it just gives it to, to your nearest allied god, which is really hard to actually control. There's nothing you can really do about it. It's kind of like Hero's Axe, where like, it's just going to give it to somebody that maybe you don't even want them to have it, such as like a tank or something. So it's just kind of random, and it's a bit RNG, which is something you don't really want to have going into a team fight. So I don't know how how, how uh, useful this will actually be, but you know maybe you buy it late game when you have enough gold and you, you wanted to go Magi's anyway, you know? Um, uh, this one's a little bit different. This is more of like an aggressive style for Magi's. The other one's sort of like to protect your teammates. This one's to go aggro on the enemy team. First time you got to hit you with crowd control while you're protected becomes marked for revenge for five seconds. Gods marked for revenge cause enemy gods within 40 units to move 20% faster towards them and take 10% increased damage. So sort of like a, a sprint in Sunder to chase them, the enemies out, which is pretty decent. I mean, it's five seconds long. Could be the difference maker in a team fight. So I think this one's a lot better uh, because it's not as RNG. You know, kind of know exactly what you're going to do with it and... You just go get your revenge. So now, Lona's Mask and Rangda's Mask. There's a lot of stuff to go over here. I don't really want to go through the specifics of the numbers, but basically they're becoming starter items, and um, they're going to be pretty similar in their function. But before, when you bought Lona's or Rangda's, they had a pretty clear negative to them because Rangda's, you would just take increased damage and you would get one shot. Lona's, you would just do basically no damage, but you'd still be pretty tanky. So now what happens when you get this uh, upgraded, which it can be upgraded at level 15, I believe. I believe it can be upgraded at level 15. I don't really know where to see this, but um, you can actually shed those negatives from you. And it makes it makes perfect sense why they're doing this. And I'll explain that in a second. Let me pick my character. I'm going to play King Colin, just kind of one, two, sounds one. Um, the reason they're doing this is because if you are, right now, if you are level 20 and you have a full tank build with Alonos, you don't do damage to them anyway. Unless you have, like, Glad Shield. Glad Shield might be the only exception. But if you're full tank in your late game, you're not really one-shotting anybody. You're not really threatening that much with damage. If you're, like, a full tank build. Now, if you're, like, a Guardian who has, like, a Warlocks and a Conduit upgrade, that's a little bit different. But So, and the same thing applies to Rangdas. If you're a full damage build and you have a Rangdas, you're already really squishy. Because the only people you can buy this on are Warriors and Guardians. If you are a full damage build right now and you have a Rangdas and you walk into a team fight, you are going to get one shot even if you didn't have the Rangdas. So what they're doing is they're rewarding you for building correctly with the item. So if you have enough prots with Lonos, your damage reduction goes down. As in like your the amount of damage you output can go all the way down to zero. You can shed all the negatives of it if you have like a full tank 300 of each prot build. So now you actually can do a little bit of damage. You aren't as punished for building correctly. And you still get the benefit of Lonos. The same, and this can actually scale throughout the game because each level, you can see damage decreased out by six percent plus 0.25 of uh, your god's level. Same thing applies to Rangdas, just in reverse. Um, and same thing applies to Rangdas. Like I said, if you build full damage, you can actually shed that um, the negative that Rangdas has, which is where you take more damage. It just makes perfect sense. It's a really, really smart way to balance these items. I don't know how often these are going to be purchased. Keep in mind, you can purchase these on anybody now. You don't have to be a warrior. Um, oh, wait, never mind. Oh, okay, I'm stupid. I thought they changed it where you can build it on anybody. But yeah, I guess you can still only build it on Warriors and Guardians. I swear during the playtest that wasn't true, but maybe I'm stupid. Okay, but either way, yeah. That's how it works. I really don't think these are going to be bought that often, to be honest. Especially now that the only person who would buy Lonos, in my opinion, is probably support. And now that their items are purchasable at 15 and they all have gold per 5, like Sentinels Embrace has gold per 5 on it now, I don't I don't see a, a role you'd be building this in. Maybe solo, but I think it just hurts your PvE way too hard in the early to mid game. And it has to be your starter item. There might be a meta where Solaner starts skipping start skipping their starter item at the beginning of the game because at level 15 you can get these OP support starter items that have gold per 5 on them, or like Sentinels Boon gives you extra gold. There might be a meta where that happens, and maybe they can consider building Lonos in those scenarios. Maybe it looks good in certain scenarios, but 
Nah, I don't, I don't know if they're gonna be that great. So, some pretty cool items are being added now. Kind of like the Ethereum items, but these are a bit different. Um, there's four separate items. There's Griffin Wing Earrings, there's Sphinx's Bobbles, Mantid Core Spikes, Fey Blessed Hoops. So in playtest, these were OP. They nerfed it to 7.5%, but during the playtest it was 15%. You get 15% uh, health shield and there was no cooldown on it every time you were near your teammates and you healed them. You just have to pick up the flower. They took off the movement speed. They had 5% movement speed, but they also took that off. So this item's a lot worse now. I don't think it's really going to be that great. Just a, pre a brief overview, though. I think this item's not going to be good anymore. This item I don't think is any good. Sinks' Bobbles can be good in certain scenarios on certain characters, utility characters that will uh, benefit from the 60% cooldown that don't get as hurt by the reduction in damage. And then this item I don't think is going to be purchased by anybody besides maybe like X-Ball or Hachiman. And maybe Freya if it still works on her. I think those items in general are just supposed to be fun items. I don't think they're going to be that viable and competitive or like high levels of play. So yeah, I kind of went over, I briefly went over it. So this is just basically going to make your auto attacks get to their destination 50% faster. It doesn't increase your attack speed. The travel time of your actual auto attack from your character to the, where it hits is just 50% faster. So it basically makes your autos a hit scan kind of. Um, but it also reduces your basic attack damage by 15%. And you can only build this on mages and hunters. And the only characters you would build it on are characters that want to have high damage in their auto attack. So it's just kind of a nombo and it's just more of like a fun item. This is not going to be a good item, I don't think. Maybe on X-Ball and Hachiman is the only ones I can see it on. This is the only item in this tree after they've hard nerfed Fae Blast Hoops that I think is going to be like an actually viable item. Because it increases your cooldown uh, cap to 60%, but it also increases or decreases your damage dealt and healing by 20%. And that's a bad negative, but 60% cooldown on certain characters with a lot of utility that don't really want to rely on their damage, such as like a Nox, an E-Set, um, you know, a lot of certain Guardians as well, uh, I think it could be pretty pretty insane on. Um, interesting to see how it works on Yemoja, actually, but but yeah. So then Manticore Spike is basically, you just, every time you hit somebody with a hard crowd control, they drop a spike on the ground, and if you pick it up, you do extra damage to them. I just don't think the base stats are really that great, especially for, like, the characters you'd be building on. The base stats aren't horrible, but, like, no prots, no power. Items like this that give you neither prots or power are just hard to justify in a lot of, uh, a lot of metas. Um, Fabulous Hoops was absolutely broken on the playtest when they first released it because it gave you 15%. I already went over this a little bit, and it also gave you 5% movement speed. Now it's just 7.5%. I think it might be okay. still might be a little bit viable, but I don't know. Hard to justify, honestly. Maybe on certain characters, or maybe like Yemoja. Um, but again, it just gives you no prompts, no power, nothing, so it's a little bit hard to justify. Keep in mind that these items are cheap, apart from Sphinx's Bobble. That's going to be 2,700 gold, so the cheapness of the items could push them into the uh, meta a little bit. They're nerfing all the anti-heal items, which I actually think is pretty good. Healing isn't that crazy right now, and anti-heal items are pretty sick. Plus, they just kind of changed the out-of-combat thing, so kind of go in line with that. So they're changing Boombas. Boombas. It's no longer going to be like a, a really good tank item. It's going to give you flat uh, power, physical and magical power. Only going to give you 150 health, no longer going to give you mana, and only going to give you 10% cooldown reduction. It's still going to be the same passive, but it doesn't apply to your non-ultimate cooldowns. Um, and it's also going to be, instead of a percentage of your max health, it's just 120 flat health heal. So yeah, this is supposed to be better on like actual tank, or not tanky, but actual uh, like damaging junglers. Because you don't get as much health from it anymore. It's no longer a percentage of your max health, so you're not like being rewarded for building a ton of health with the item. And also it doesn't work on your ultimate anymore, so definitely a nerf. But keep in mind, 50 power is still pretty strong, so we'll see where that item ends up. At first it was a buff, but then they changed the passive even more uh, after the playtest. Um, increasing amulet of stronghold, so the more physical defense you have, the more magical protections you'll get. Or the reverse, I forget exactly, but never really bought, so... Kind of interesting, I don't know, kind of a boring item, to be honest. This is kind of a fun item, and I actually think this is kind of underrated, and they're, uh, buffing the cooldown from the passive, so now it's every 30 seconds you'll just get a big silence in an AoE, which is pretty sick. Um, I think this item's pretty underrated, maybe see it bought more, even in Soul Lane next patch. Now, all starter items for supports are going to be purchasable at 15, just to help the supports out a little bit. They've been in a pretty rough spot. I think they're going to be insane now, honestly, with the uh, Sentinels Embrace is going to have gold per five on it as well, which is just crazy. At a sick gold per five seconds, they increase the gold per, tri uh, gold per trigger from seven to eight on Sentinels Gift, which is just the base. And uh, that's kind of, I mean, that's kind of negligible. It's like every six waves, you get an extra reward or like, I don't know, something like that. Six waves with some jungle camps. Not really that crazy, but they also increased the XP bonus for being the lowest level on the team, so that helps supports a lot. And yeah, 
I think it, these are pretty good buffs. I feel like they go back and forth with Relic Dagger all the time. It literally goes they're back to 40 seconds. It was 40 seconds, and they nerfed it to 30. Now it's back to 40, and they, I don't know. They just keep changing this item back and forth. It's so troll. It's hard to justify building this item because you just get one shot if you don't go uh, like a Tinky item in the mid-game. Spirit Rib is just like so much better for win as a support, and then nobody else builds the item. Um, increasing Tyrannical Plate Helm. I don't think this item is viable at all. It only gives you like 30 physical protections, which is just so bad. And this is the lane item. You need earlier prots for that for this item to be justified, and it just doesn't give you enough. And it's supposed to be a lane item because it literally is, helps out your minions. I still think this item is bad. Too expensive as well. Uh, might as well just go Jade Emperors if you're going to go a tinky, or a expensive Tinky item. Increasing male renewal prots. This item's already kind of underrated in my opinion. 30 prots might be more justifiable. It also helps out your team in the healing, especially if you have no healing on your team and it's unlikely they build anti heal. Pretty good. Sledge CCR up to 30%. This is so weird to me. How many items in the game give you 10% CCR? I feel like there's not a lot. But um, it's just odd. Because the cap is 40%. So your one-stop shop gets to 30% CCR on an item. Just a little bit weird. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Maybe pretty decent, especially now that DR is like so, in so insane. This is pretty cool. That the passive now gives you 15 power and 30 magical power. I think that's a pretty cool buff. Interact more with the passive. I think this item is going to be more viable. This is one of my favorite changes in the entire patch. They've... Uh, re-added the 10% cooldown reduction to Pythags and taking off the 10% pen. I actually think the 10% pen is pretty nice on it, but 10% cooldown just fits a lot more with the characters that you'll be building this on. And it also increased the health from 200 to 250. This is part of the reason I've been spamming this item in uh, in my builds and stuff lately, because I'm just preparing for the item, because I think it's going to be really good as a first item. 10% cooldown, 250 health, tons of sustain, nice aura for your team. Going to be really good as a, uh, a magical starter, like first item. As Guardian or Mage. Mirrodin is no longer the same. Um, you get Mirrodin's Rage now, which gives you increased damage dealt, and it decays over 8 seconds. So basically, when you finish casting your ult, your next ability, if you use it right away, it's going to hit pretty hard. So think of like a Janus. Janus ulting through, going through the wall instantly, and using his 2, it hits really hard. I saw Ven do that in the playtest, and it was pretty sick. Did a lot of damage. Now Celestial Legion has a uh, crit reduction on it. Um, you lose it. Just like the passive regularly does, you lose protections when you get hit by physical damage. Um, it's the same with this. You're going to lose 4% each stack. Get up to 20%. So you can combine with the spectral, this with the Spectral and get some good crit reduction. Um, this item just kind of meh, but maybe this will bring it back. Maybe a little bit. I think it could help a bit. Uh, crit's going to be a little bit hard to build against magical heavy or like guardian heavy comps, I guess. This is the bracer that walks around and finds wards for you. It's really not viable, and it's much worse than the other bracer, so I don't even think this is going to do anything. Uh, the way it functions just doesn't really work and make it viable. I think it you should be able to like control it or something. Um, they increase the drowned onk damage. This is the one that spawns pools and does damage if people stand over him. Um, kind of does, I think, buff it a little bit. You know, 2% extra HP is pretty insane. Think of, like, Sundering getting nerfed by, like, 1% each patch and it getting worse and worse. So, like, a buff like this can help. I just think the other one is so strong. Like, when you when you do the other onk on somebody and they have a lot of healing, you just get so much healing in return. It's ridiculous. So, I don't know if that actually helps. I tested this in jungle practice. The uh, Cloak of the Avatar, which is the upgraded meditation, the one that knocks people back, it, they actually go flying with this. So you can actually maybe buy this early game and use it to peel late game if you're a support type character. Um, the only issue I see is that the healing that you get from this item is pretty negligible nowadays. And uh, is this really better than just like a shell for peel? Probably not. And is it really better than um, the even just the other med that gives your teammates reduced cooldowns? Even better than that, if they can get their cooldowns back sooner, that might be even more valuable. But especially with all the knock immunity in the game and just like, you know, just the, it, it'd be pretty hard to get a lot of value out of this. Um, but I, I think it's still going to be something to mess around with for sure. Um, so they've changed Chaotic Beads, buffed this a bit. It's now going to do true damage, 5% of their current health, which is really good for squishies who have like tanks diving them. If it does 5% of current health as true damage, that's just really nice to have. The problem is if you're getting dove and you're having the beads, it's probably later on in the like mid middle of the fight-ish and maybe their health isn't going to be like that high to begin with, but a nice little buff. Um... And then they could decrease the health th threshold for Tremble to occur from 30% max HP to 15% max HP, so just a little bit more likely to get that actually procced in a team fight. Still think the other Horrific is just so much better. Although, keep in mind, Tremors are now soft CC, so they can't be DR'd. So that kind of helps this item a bit. Maybe with those two things combined? You never know. Increase the uh, target's damage taken increase from 5 to 7.5%. That's good. Uh, increased thorns of other overgrowth radius from 55 units to 70 units. I don't think this is going to make this item good. I think the problem with thorns now is that people are tankier. They have more base prots, so that 
The, the reflect damage is just negligible nowadays. It's not very good. They updated Silver Branch's descri description to include that attack speed is capped at 2.5, just to, I don't know, help with uh, it being pretty clear. These are the dimin diminishing returns changes that we talked about. Um, so if you don't know what DR is, it's basically just whenever you consecutively CC somebody, the second, the third, the following CCs will be less valuable. So if you Athena taunt somebody and it lasts two seconds, you go and you mirror freeze them. Even though your mirror freeze is supposed to last two seconds, it won't last as long. It'll last like a second. They're changing the way uh, DR works in the game. First of all, you can actually see it now. It's going to be a debuff that you can actually see in-game, which is really, really important. I think it helps a lot with uh, things just being clear and helping out with new players. They're also changing uh, CC in general. So now Roots are considered a hard CC. Um, and then intoxicate, Intoxicates and Trembles, so think like Bacchus Salt, think like Cabracken Tremors. Those are soft CCs now, um, which means they don't apply DR and they aren't affected by DR. What does this mean? It well, Also... Don't forget that uh, knockups now apply two stacks of DR, so keep that in mind as well, uh, which is pretty important. Knockups are the best CC in the game, and uh, this is just a way to nerf them. The only thing I see the problem with it applying two stacks of DR is that in order to combo off knockups now, if you use like a stun or anything like that, it's not really going to last that long or like a root. So you kind of just want to have another knockup. So it kind of buff indirectly buffs knockups knockups as well because you want to have another knockup to follow up off that knockup. But yeah, other than that. Um, these are some pretty interesting changes. Like, Bacchus, I think, is going to be insane now. Um, just an 8-second intoxicate on his ult every single time is just ridiculous, especially on, like, uh, you know, the carries and stuff like that. Um, and then also something you got to keep in mind is that, like, characters that rely on their knockup to combo are going to get nerfed. Like, Hercules, for example, he needs to pull somebody to him. He's going to apply two stacks of DR, so his stun that he uses off of his knockup isn't going to last very long at all now. Um... So he's kind of gotten nerfed, and that's why they're buffing him, which you're going to see. And they also buffed through the regrowth, which obviously helps him. Um, so yeah, DR changes are pretty interesting. We'll have to see how much they actually affect the meta and what characters are like, you know, switched up and stuff because of that. Don't really care about this, whatever. Uh, buffing Al Kwong. Cool, I guess. I don't know. I think this character just doesn't really... He just can't really work with this kit. Um, Cerberus is getting a bit of a buff. Uh, and this is to help with his DR changes as well, because whenever you knock up somebody with his ult and throw them some there, you want to stun them. And now your stun's going to last not as long, so they're buffing the healing reduction from his passive, which is pretty cool, especially for our Cerberus Tainted Steel builds that we like to go. And then uh, increasing the damage from Paralyzing Spit from 160 to 170, just 10 per rank. So, um, yeah, that helps him a bit. Definitely helps the fact that he just got nerfed by the DR changes. Uh, buffing Cupid, yeah, whatever. It's not that big of a deal. I don't think that's going to make him better or anything. Uh, buffing Discordia. I think Discordia is kind of on the verge of being meta, to be honest. The fact that she gives solo laners increased power in a meta where people are playing off solo, like, big time, I think helps a lot. That helps her case. And, you know, buffing her her one in her... Or two in her, her three are pretty good. So, yeah, Herc needed a buff, like I was talking about, because he's getting 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 nerfed by the DR changes. So, to decrease cooldown of Driving Strike from 14 to 13, and then... In Decrease the cooldown of Earthbreaker. So his combo is just going to be up a little bit more. One second on each. You get to level this, obviously. Um, this is a huge change in the patch, in my opinion. At least as far as god changes go. Hunbats' 2 now has knockup and knockback immunity. doesn't really matter which one you say. You could say knockup immunity. It means knockback immunity as well. So both, you're going to be knockup immune the entire duration of your 2 when you're charging it. Which is really good for outplay potential. And like now you can use this as like a counter pick against certain gods that rely on their knockups. You know? And like when you know they're coming. Like, say, Bacchus is going to flop into you. You can now prepare and use your two and just do that. 15 damage. Also 15 damage on this. So 15 extra damage on the two as well, which is... I think combats is going to be pretty good after next patch. To be fair, the warrior meta in jungle running people down kind of hurts on bats, but, you know, I'd say he's one of the more viable assassins right now as well. Nike getting some buffs. She's kind of just been rough for a little bit. Decreased cooldown of Ren. You have to level it now, and it goes down to 12, which is pretty sick. Increase the damage of the barrier formation, which is just your two. Kind of helps a little bit. Just helps with clear. I think this isn't like 10 damage isn't really that crazy, but over the course of a game, especially when you're PVEing throughout the early to mid, can help a lot. So something I accidentally hinted at because uh, I thought it already changed, but this is in the mid-season patch. Um, increase the return damage from 20 per shard to 30 per shard on the one, which is pretty sick. Kind of like old rat two way back in the day if you guys played with that. I like that. That's a fun little change. I like the ability. I like the old rat two. I can't believe they... Uh, Still sad to this day that they made that not happen, but, um, you know, still a uh, nice little buffer. Pele. I think Pele's on the cusp right now of being viable, honestly. Maybe not in jungle, but in solo, I, I actually do think so. She's one of these characters that can build Lona's and the Sigil and be pretty freaking tanky late game. Um, Sirket getting some more buffs. She, ever since she was kind of, like, re-kitted or um, 
changed her style a little bit to be more of like an actual assassin in the jungle. She hasn't really seen too much play. I think she's actually not too bad, though. Um, I know I say that about a lot of gods, but... Now some really cool changes to make junglers, uh, to maybe shake up the jungle meta a little bit. Aerie Shackles now do extra damage to jungle monsters. Just jungle monsters, not lane minions. Same thing with Donza's uh, 2, right? That's his 2. It's a little bit weird, but... Um, and Morgan 1. Just kind of helping out their jungle potential. Just maybe shake up the meta a little bit, which I think is really cool. I like changes like this. Um, this also helps Aerie Soul lane a lot. Because now you're going to be able to PvE a little bit better when you, you know, clear your lane minions and then walk into the jungle. You can actually clear stuff. Maybe helps you secure as well. Especially if you have your conduit passive up. And then you like get get it pretty low and then want it. It might actually do some good burst damage to it. I'm saying you think with these gods, Changa is getting some increased base HP, which is pretty insane. It's about 150 uh, max at level 20, which is pretty good. Uh, and then now her one does extra damage to minions. That is her one, right? I believe it is. So pretty crazy. That's the, I think it's to all minions, so jungle camps and lane minions helps out her, her farming, which is something that maybe she wasn't horrible at, but uh, securing buff she wasn't great at, so that helps a lot. Cool change to Thor as well. His, uh, his one actually does 100% of the damage now uh, to the minions. Um, it, does, it was reduced before, but now that's no longer happening. And also increased Zhang's base physical protection from 11.2 to 18.2, which is insane. He's, gonna be, he's already so tanky early to mid-game. I'm not really sure why they did this. Um, his passive gives him so much. I guess it makes sense because it was low before because he had his passive. And in the past, a lot of the, the design decisions were made based on stuff like that. So, like, let's say your your passive gives you MP5. So, let's say it gave you, like, 15 MP5. What they would do is make your base MP5 lower just so it's, like, more balanced. But I don't really think that should be a thing. Like, it should be the same as other gods plus the passive that you have. So that's kind of what they're doing with Zhang. Um, I think Thor Solo is going to be a little bit more viable next patch. I don't know how much more viable. I don't know if this actually really changes all that much. Um, but yeah. And then this stuff I don't give a fuck about. One thing to say about this is that they're making it so they can change characters based on the game mode. So like Aposh and Arena will down new, now do reduced damage to minions and gods and also have uh, longer cooldowns. But in Conquest, his kit will still be the same. And that applies to all these characters that are really strong in other game modes but weak in Conquest and vice versa. I think this is a little bit weird for people who are trying to practice those game modes or play those game modes to get a feel for gods and then switch over to Conquest. I think it's a little bit weird. It kind of splits the player base up a little bit. But at the same time, I think this is cool so you can actually balance gods based on Conquest and not have to worry about too much of the other game modes, which are just dog shit in my opinion. Conquest should be the only game mode you're playing. Just kidding. Arena's fun too. Um, but yeah, so that's all of the patch notes. Overall, I'm pretty excited about this patch. Seems like a lot of things that could shake up the meta, a lot of fun stuff, and uh, just looking forward to it. Especially the Nickelodeon Battle Pass. Definitely excited for that. But yeah, good patch. Good job, Pirate.